What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got two Transformers cards to talk about. Now, we don't usually double up character cards, but firstly, it's been really busy lately. Secondly, I want to start doing some other videos on this channel. And thirdly, they're both Micromasters, and they're both Autobots. Which means they are thematically similar, and it means that there's a bit less to talk about them, so I'm fine with it. We'll see how it goes. If it's a disaster, we won't do it again. We are talking about Private Stakeout, revealed by the lovely Big Angry Tref, and Private Top Shot, revealed by the lovely folks over at Vector Sigma. So make sure we give those guys some love. Now look, they are both Micromasters, so they're both four costs, which is incredibly low, which is good, it can fill out your team, and they've both got stealth while untapped, which means that until you flip them over into bot mode, or you attack with them, or you use their tap skill, obviously they've got a tap skill, you can sit there knowing they're going to survive, which is quite nice. Now, if we start off with Private Stakeout, who I think is probably my favourite of the two, we see that it's got... I mean, they've got bad stats, right? Attack of 3 or 2 is actually quite good for a 4 cost. But Health of 5 and then Defence of 1 or 0 is bad. There's no way around it. This ain't good, ladies and gentlemen. This ain't good. Boo, hiss, etc. But... As with all of the Micromasters, you have a skill in bot mode, which means that you have to discard a certain colour of battle icon card from your hand, and then you get a skill which is the same as a battle card which has the icon you just discarded. For Private Stakeout, it's Rapid Conversion. You scrap a white icon card from your hand, and you get to flip one of your characters to its other mode. This is nice. This is really nice. Flipping Transformers is one of the most powerful things in the game. I mean, look, they're called Transformers. They have two modes. One of the things you're allowed to do during your turn is flip one of your Transformers. So clearly, the opportunity to get extra flips in should excite us. It should be a good thing. It should make us happy. And it really does. This is great. Now, look. As I've pointed out in a number of different places. If you're tapping, you're not attacking. And remember that at the end of your turn, you attack. And then if your opponent has no untapped characters, you keep attacking with all of your characters. That's the way it goes. And the thing is that if you're tapping then it might be that on your opponent's last turn of the round of turns, or whatever you want to call it, they get an extra attack. Or maybe you actually end up losing a turn. Either way here, tapping your character can be a bad thing because you've got one fewer character left untapped at one of your turns, and then that can backfire. So it needs to be worth it. And the thing is, this flips one of your characters... So this can do a lot. You can use any skill from any character that has a flip. Now that could be something like Bumblebee Trusted Lieutenant, for instance, which lets you play an extra action. Or it could be Grimlock, giving one of your characters or one of your Dinobots bold free. Or it could be literally a million other things, or at least in a few sets a million other things. There's too many to go through here. The point is, I don't know if it's always worth giving up the attack or giving your opponent an extra attack, or however you want to phrase it, to do this. But I do think that this is a very, very powerful thing, which is going to do you right in an awful lot of games. Now, the other thing I really like about Private Stakeout is that it is a specialist. And Specialist means you get Field Communicator. You get other stuff as well, but you get Field Communicator. When you attach it, you get to play the top card of your deck. This is a four-cost Specialist. Which means this rounds out a team really nicely. If you're playing Specialist, you're probably playing Free Field Communicator. They're amazing. 
and you might have four or five stars left over, this is a really good way to fill four stars left over. If you've got five stars left over, maybe you go, well, I kind of like RC. I can't really argue with you there. RC's a rather phenomenal five-cost character. But this is a four-cost specialist with a really nice tap ability. I'm a bit of a fan. It's also a car. If you're looking for a car, it's fine. Again, the bot mode skill is pretty good. And it means you can use stuff like start your engines to flip it and all of that. I have no huge problem with it as a car, but it doesn't excite me like it does as a four-star specialist with a really good tap ability. Okay, so we're feeling all right about private stakeout. How do we feel about private top shot? Well, it's got terrible stats. How for five, bad. Attack of one or two, bad. Defense of one or two, I mean, I'll give you this, right? Defense of two on a four cost is pretty good. And that's about what we get. Now, in terms of the tap skill in bot mode here, you scrap an orange icon card from your hand, you draw two cards, and then you put a card from your hand on top of your deck. For anyone wondering, this is incoming transmission. Orange icon does exactly the same thing. It's all right. I think there are other ways we can draw cards. Now, putting a card on top of your deck can be quite good to stack your deck before you attack. Make sure you've got some orange icons. I mean, maybe you've got something like Peace Through Tyranny with a double orange in your hand. So you get to draw two cards, put this down, guaranteed a double orange when you attack. It's fine. It doesn't excite me like Stakeout excites me. I don't think it's bad. It just doesn't excite me like Stakeout excites me. The thing is, we've got another four-cost character with Top Shot, and there are two things here I really, really like. Now, it's a ranged character, which is fine. I've made no secret of my love for armed hovercraft. You can use it to power marksmanship. If you want to discard some cards in your opponent's hand, you can use this with Rapid Ascent, for instance. There's, there's cool stuff going on here. But it's not really what we're looking at. What I'm looking at here is that it is a tank and it's an Autobot leader. Now, you might be thinking, hang on a second, Wasi. We've had a four-star Autobot tank in the past. And you're absolutely right, we have. It's Slammer. Slammer came around in the Metroplex deck and it is a four-cost tank. And it has strictly better stats than Private Top Shot if we ignore the health. And the health of three is horrendous for Slammer. Because if you have your, an opponent that just slams down a bolt of lightning, it will just take it out in one go. So the health of three kind of terrifies me. I don't know, not that many people are playing Bolt of Lightning. But it only takes one or two people to just take it off the field. And Slammer... I mean, look, when you deploy it from under Metroplex, you do one damage to each enemy, which is a great skill in a Metroplex deck. And it gives Metroplex Bold 1, which is a great skill in a Metroplex deck. Outside of a Metroplex deck, you would only play Slammer because it's a four-star tank. So you're playing a whole bunch of stuff like Team Up Tactics, for instance. So, why not? Maybe you're playing Hunker Down as well. And look, I've got four stars to play with. I might as well play this. Private Top Shot is a better four-star tank. Let's just put that right out there. It is a better four-star tank. It is a four-star tank that excites me way more, ladies and gentlemen. Way more. But it's also an Autobot leader. Which means you can use this with Matrix of Leadership. Now, one of the things Vector Sigma point out in their reveal article, which is awesome, incidentally. I highly recommend you go check it out. I'll pop a link in the description. You know I'm a big fan of giving love to the people that do these reveals. And I don't think anyone out there can argue that Vector Sigma are not doing a huge amount of good for the community and trying to push the game forward. Those guys rock. Give them some love. And one of the things they point out here is a Matrix of Leadership... When Wave 2 came out and we had a lot more options, this saw a lot less play. But you've still got the orange and blue icon here, and this might now be worth it. 
Now, each of your other characters gets plus one attack and pierce one. But the fact that you can take advantage of this on a four cost might make it worth playing again. So there's a lot to like about Private Top Shot just for the fact that it's a four cost tank and a four cost leader. Now, it's also a range character, and it's got a decent tap skill. And here's the thing. I know I flipped over the tap skill. Make no mistake about it. Drawing two cards is good. Being able to stack the top card of your deck, or fix the top card of your deck, however you want to phrase it, is good. And it has seen a fair amount of play. I'm just not loving it like I'm loving some of the other tap skills. But the thing about playing these Micromasters is this. You've got the tap skill if you need it. You've got all of the traits if you need them. And it's only a four cost. So the thing about Private Top Shot is, it's not on the face of it some fantastic powerhouse card. The stats are bad, as we would expect. But maybe you want a four cost tank. In which case, a tap skill is a handy bonus. Maybe you want a four-cost Autobot leader, in which case a tap skill's a handy bonus. Maybe you just want something else. And maybe the tap skill goes, oh, you know, why not? Either way, these are interesting cards. They're not cards around which you build a deck. They are cards that you chuck into an existing deck where you've got some spare stars because they're going to augment your strategy and give you extra options. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Do please let me know in the comment section if you like doing this, where we double up some of the smaller characters. We're never going to be able to double up something like a Captain Ironhide, where I was struggling to get the video down to like 13 minutes. But certainly in some of these smaller cards, we can have a go in the future. We'll see what happens. What I would very much like to see, however, is your opinion on this card. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, And that's where we talk about games. And of course, and this is by far the most important thing, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wassy Plays.